Good morning, family. Good morning. Hi, sis. Hi, sis. <laughs> what a joy it is to join with all of you. Tremendous gratitude for all the healing that's taking place. The, the speed up and uh, the speed up of the revelations that are taking place. I'm deeply grateful. Thank you. We're on section 13 entitled, What is a Miracle? And uh, Sis and I are joined in this intent to adequately really flush this up and unpack it adequately, more than adequately, um, so that there's no misunderstanding in this area because it's rife and open to a lot of misinterpretation. So let's dive in. I'm excited. Me too. <laughs> That's really what our purpose is, isn't it, Sis? <clears throat> yeah. It. yeah. What is a miracle? A miracle is a correction. It does not create nor really change at all. It merely looks on devastation and reminds the mind that what it sees is false. It undoes error, but does not attempt to go beyond perception nor exceed the function of forgiveness. Thus, it, the miracle, stays within time's limits, mm -hmm. yet it paves the way for the return of timelessness and love's awakening, for fear must slip away under the gentle remedy it gives. A miracle contains the gift of grace, for it is given and received as one. And thus, it illustrates the law of truth the world does not obey because it fails entirely to understand its ways. A miracle inverts perception, which was upside down before, and thus it ends the strange distortions that were manifest. Now is perception open to the truth. Now is forgiveness seen as justified. Forgiveness is the home of miracles. The eyes of Christ deliver them to all they look upon in mercy and in love. Perception stands corrected in his sight, and what was meant to curse has come to bless. Each lily of forgiveness offers all the world the silent miracle of love. And each is laid before the word of God upon the universal altar to creator and creation in the light of perfect purity and endless peace. The miracle is taken first on faith because to ask for it implies the mind has been made ready to conceive of what it cannot see and does not understand. Yet faith will bring its witnesses to show that what it rested on is really there. And thus the miracle will justify your faith in it and show it rested on a world more real than what you saw before, a world redeemed from what you thought you saw. Oh, interesting. There's a few changes in the FIP version, sis. Uh, you said a world redeemed from what you thought before. Is that what you said? A world redeemed from what you thought you saw. Oh, okay. All right. It, and, and in the FIP version, a world redeemed from what you thought was there. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Miracles fall like drops of healing rain from heaven on a dry and dusty world where starved and thirsty creatures come to die. Now they have water. Now the world is green and everywhere the signs of life spring up to show that what is born can never die. 
for what has life has immortality. Okay. Stay up. So maybe we can unpack this. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Yes, yes. You know, there was something that I was um, reading this morning in uh, chapter 13. I forget the exact section. It'll come to me. But he was talking about the darkness. And the darkness is, the, is what happens in the mind when fear is introduced into it. And when fear is in the mind and all is dark, we're not seeing anything. And we're trying to see things that aren't even there. We're just making things up in this dark with our own definitions and our own judgments of, of what is there. But not until the light dawns do we ever experience creation as God created it. So we don't know God's creation or what we are in the dark, obviously. And the light is what we're asking for. And the light and love are one and the same. So the mind that's in the dark is needs, you know, it needs an impartation of a perfect love to enlighten that mind so that it can see truly with true perception. So all healing really is a correction at the level of the mind where, where fear used to reign and darkness was attempted to, we're perceiving through darkness, the light dawns in that mind. The eyes are truly open through Christ's vision. And we see what we've been talking about, this, this real world, a happy dream, true perception. It's right here, right now. But while we're still entertaining fear, we're unable to experience it. So here we have the belief of billions of privatized minds and bodies all in the dark. This whole entire dream is predicated on fear. There is no light here until, right? Until one brother is willing to look upon another brother and recognize that there's a call for love. And the one brother that recognizes the call for love is present enough and wants and desires to transcend its own selfish interests. There's the love that transcends, goes beyond. It breaks the laws of the ego. And it, it meets, it sees its brother's call for love as its own. That brother's desire, let there be light. Let me be truly helpful. Father what are you doing here? It's, it's the asking for the light. And when that light dawns in the mind, who asked? That brother then can behold the one who was calling for love in their true light. And the brother who's calling for love cannot maintain the illusion in the presence of the one who's seeing them through that light. That light is shared. And it heals both the giver and the receiver. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, projection makes perception. So while the mind was previously divided, love was there, but it was covered over through the circle of fear. But the light was introduced because one chose to love his brother enough as himself to ask for that light. That light casts out the fear. Mm -hmm. That mind that was previously split is returned to its whole status. Can, logically, can the mind that is now whole, filled with light, project an illusion, project sick, lacking, or sinful images? Is it possible that purity could send forth anything less than pure? No, it's not possible. It's impossible, it's inconceivable, which is why God doesn't know about the dream. When our mind is restored, our mind is God-like and love produces only love. So that family is how literal miracles occur. 
Mm. Not that anything really wrong was ever changed from something bad to good, but it was a revealing of what's always there. That's why the miracle doesn't do anything, but it brings the light which heals the mind, which leads to true perception. It's not so miraculous as it is divinely natural to see what God is doing absent the filter that we overlaid or superimposed between us through fear. When fear is gone, we will know God aright and we will know our brother as ourself. But I love this, that the, the instigating, the, the thing that gets everything into motion here was that a brother saw another brother as himself and extended, went to the source and gave lovingly, generously, seeing his own in a, his own need in, a, in another's, right? Meeting his brothers was meeting his own. That's the healing of the one mind that we all share because we don't have a separate brother. There's one of us looking like billions of indi uh, separate individuated people, but that's not true at all. So where two or more are joined, there I am in the midst. It takes that, a sharing of the goal to remove fear in, in place of love, put love in place of fear, excuse me. All right. Wow. Sis, that was beautifully expressed. Thank you. It's really on my heart this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And can I just speak to all of you for a moment? I mean, like really speak to you. This is just, this is undeniable um, that Nook and I were brought together. And I just, there's, there's such a pushback against this teaching and it makes me, I was raised in Christian science. Healing by turning to God was normal and natural. It's all my family ever relied upon. And it's all those that I went to Sunday school with and their parents at church relied upon. I didn't know anything else existed. I didn't know the realm of doctors and medicine and health laws and flu season and taking cold and I didn't, I wasn't educated in that. We would just go to God and God always met the need, always. And it wasn't until grammar school and health class when I was exempted from it that I started to think that maybe I was a little different. Something was up, right? But I've carried this felt, this knowing, this certainty is what I came into this lifetime with, that this is how healing occurs. And we don't limit it and say that it's not literal. How can the mind be healed and the body that it projects not be affected? The mind as an idea in uh, the body as an idea in the mind is neutral. And we're dreaming that it's doing things and it takes us directive from our beliefs. You know, if you believe that you'll take cold in January and have the flu, well, then the body just does what it's being directed. By, but alternately, if you recognize that the body's only under the God's laws, God doesn't send sickness to his son, that if God is omnipresent, we're always moving in the atmosphere of love, where there's no cold, there's no sickness, there's no contagion. The mind that just rests in that never takes cold, never contracts the flu. Why are we so quick to want to condemn one another under health laws, so-called, but stand so rigidly against, well, miracles aren't literal. So I came forward and I linked arms with sis because I found the rest of the teaching, like the completion of the picture in A Course in Miracles. And so my part is to stand here before you and say, this is the most loving teaching there is. When I think of somebody who's suffering and they go to any other pathway, it's like, well, maybe a higher teaching would be that it's not true and it's not real, but you can be with it and, and just kind of dissociate from the pain or, or be with it, but it's not possible to be free of it. Like it's, it's, it imprisons, it's a bondage. And I'm always marveling because that's not what Jesus did. 
Diddy. I mean, is there a single case that we read about where he just made concessions to it? left it still as part of that person's experience, made room for it or explained it or justified it in any way, not once. And, and somewhere in the Bible, it says if they had actually written down all of Jesus's healings, there wouldn't be enough paper or room to have taken it all down. I mean, we've got a smattering wow. of what he did, mm -hmm. but he cast it out. He divorced it from the, the son of God. He stood for God and what God created. He was God's advocate. He never let sin or illusions attach itself to God's son. And, and it's the most loving. It's the most righteous. And he's calling us to do it. And having done it and seen it being done, I get impassioned about getting the message out that you don't stop at 80%. Your inheritance is perfection because that's how God created you. And to accept anything less would be to, to cast dispersion on God. It's an insult to a perfect God and his perfect creation to say, well, we're going to hold up here. There's nothing that can be done to close that last 20%. That's just nonsense. I want to just tell you from my heart that healing the mind heals the body that it projects. It has to be so. I know that it is so. And I want to encourage you that you don't have to take any form of sin and its so-called effects. The separation has no cause. Therefore, let's not give it any effects. Let's not defend its so-called effects. Well, that's just natural and inevitable. Well, you can't really do anything about that. That's not true. And that's not what Jesus did. Let's not fall short, not even 99%. If God made us 100% perfect and gave us the kingdom and we are abundant and we are co-creators and that's what we do, then let's get on about doing it. It's not stepping back. We don't lower the bar because we haven't achieved it yet. We join in the power of truth and love through holy relationship, which busts that last 15% holdout, so to speak. Nothing can withstand truth and love joined together. Nothing, not even death. And that's why Nook and I are here and Daniel and the Take Me to Truth family. That's the most loving, most hopeful, most faith-filled message that there is on the planet today. And if you found these teachings, thank you. I'm kissing your feet. I'm kissing yours. Thank you. <clears throat> 2021 years from the time of us recording today. It's been a long time in coming. That's how terrified humanity has been of love, of yeah. miracles. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So sure were we that love was going to require our sacrifice. So I love you enough to pass you a clean. <laughs> I'll get one right now. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. So we yeah. have, you have some quotes, don't you, sis, or something? Well, just to support that beautiful expression of love that you just shared with us. Yeah. Yeah, the truth is true. And nothing else. It's true. Right. So why make room for what else isn't true? Why <laughs> tolerate it? We can't. we can't do that. We can't say the truth is true and what is not true also shares truth. Yeah. 
right? It's yeah. it, you know we have to make that positive separation. It's otherwise we will not know that that there is no order of difficulty in miracles. That's right. That's true. That's that. That's the ego's boasting, saying you can't have this. La you can't have your literal miracles. You can't overcome death, right? That's how it boasts, and we just cower. We just go, okay, you know, just keeping a little bit of door, a little bit of doubt open, right, to keep yeah. its lifeline going. Yeah. What helps me in this very, I know it's simplistic, but what helps me is to know that only God is true. Yeah. And that nothing else is true. In other words, God's God's love in which we rest as his most beloved children um, is all there is. That's all there is. Yeah. There's no opponent. There can't be love and fear. And yet, sis, as you know, Mm -hmm. human condition is made of fear that's it yes. and an illusory opposite of god's love right so where do we sit daily minute to minute to minute mm -hmm. in linear time mm -hmm. where do we sit in that love do we rest in it or do we sit in the fear mm -hmm. yeah. and do we respond from that fear yeah yeah they can there cannot be an opposite of God. It's impossible. There just cannot be an opponent, right? Right. And so it's very simple it, to rest in that and to know that. To accept it. Yeah. Really deeply accept it. Yeah. And there was this part of me as I was walking this morning, recognizing that, you know, it's the I the I that's our identity, the Christ, mm -hmm. the Holy self, that I am always right here present to subsume the idea that fear is, is also true or that something is wrong. You know, it's not casting it off to Jesus Christ somewhere else or a Holy Spirit. You know, it's like really bringing that Holy Spirit is my true identity. And I forgive myself for the mistaken belief that separation could ever occur mm, that's it. and you just take that problem and you bring it right into the self capital s self and just let the loveliness of love just subsume it just burn it off mm -hmm. yeah so lovely to know that the eye of our being is the answer we are the light of the world. The, the, the answer to the question, the answer to any problem is right there within you. So comforting. Isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's, that's that incorruptible innocence yeah. that we all share. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Are we willing to rest in that? <laughs> Nothing to do but to rest that the truth is true. We can't make the truth truer and the truth hasn't lost any of its truth. Just. Thank you. Thanks, sis. Thank you all. Thank you for receiving. And we did, we have, we are. Yeah. <laughs> we are receiving. We are together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for leading us, sis. Wow. Uh. Thank you. Casting forth the breadcrumbs to lead myself out of the dark forest. Yeah. But I can't lead myself out of the dark forest of the ego 
without my brothers and sisters. That's right. Thank you for joining me, sis, in this. And thank you for agreeing to go all the way. Yeah. We're not stopping halfway. No. And you know what impels it? It's love. <laughs> love for God, love for our brothers, love for the holy self. Just, that's what impels. There's nothing else to do, nowhere to go, nothing to achieve, only to forgive. <clears throat> and it's a selfless love. That's it. Mm -hmm. we have some um well i didn't finish the quote yet <laughs> oh i'm sorry yes 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 oh, that's okay i know oh. we have some blogs but yeah but but just to support the divine transmission that you shared with all of us just to support them yeah, I'd like to share a couple of quotes because I feel there's something else. I don't know what it is, but there's something else to reveal itself in this particular recording we're doing now. Okay. I trust. Yeah, yeah totally. I don't know, but it's just... so Jesus uh, in miracle. He's the miracle principles in the beginning, chapter one of A Course in Miracles, uh, miracle principle 24 says here, miracles enable you to heal the sick and raise the dead because you made sickness and death yourself and can therefore abolish both. That's pretty clear. Yeah. 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 And he, he also says here that, the body cannot create and the belief that it can, a fundamental error, produces all physical symptoms. Physical illness represents a belief in magic. The whole distortion that made magic rests on the belief, this is profound, rests on the belief that there is a creative ability in matter. Yes that the mind cannot control. It's there it is. That's it. There it is. Yeah. Intelligent that's, matter, not possible. There's that's no... that inverted perception. Yes. That the miracle has to correct, mm -hmm. right? We think that, that the body is more powerful than God. Mm -hmm. And we use symptoms to prove it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we really do need to see that mistake mm -hmm. and be open to its correction that's it thank you yeah everybody has to make that flip around that you know we're born into the world thinking that the mind is in the body and that we're subject to the body and it's and the laws that the body is subject to right so there's health laws that are governing the body and then the poor mind is helpless within the body and this is just happening to me so all that has to be punched out and inverted right and it's like oh mind governs all and the body is within the mind and the mind places that body under either the ego's so-called laws which are not laws at all they're just false beliefs or you can place the body which is neutral which will simply do whatever we ask it to do put it under divine mind's laws right so when we're letting our mind being governed by god and that mind that's governed by God is projecting that body. The divine mind is governing that body. That body is going to be healthy. The functions will be harmonious and normal and regulated. And, and the body will be strong and perfect for its function. And the body gets to be set aside when the mind no longer needs it. Well that's said. <laughs> very simple, really. It is simple. It's just their inversion. Take what we did and you know, pull it out like a sock. It's the opposite. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next one is whatever lies 
you may believe are, un, are, are of no concern to the miracle, which can heal any of them with equal ease. The miracle makes no distinctions among misperceptions. And this one, and I love this, and the next one, right, is your holiness reverses all the laws of the world. Just watching. Okay, just to see if you're all there and you're all tuned in. Yes. I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> right. Okay, take a deep breath. Let's do this. Your holiness, yes, yours, reverses all the laws of the world. It is beyond every restriction of time, of space, of distance, and limits of any kind. Your holiness is totally unlimited in its power because it establishes you as the son of God at one with the mind of his creator. Right. So, you know, there is nothing my holiness cannot do because the power of God lies in it. Yeah. Through your holiness, the power of God is made manifest. Through your holiness, the power of God is made available. And there is nothing the power of God cannot do. Does he mean this literally? Let, oh, yeah. let, let me finish, all right? <laughs> Your holiness then can remove, can remove all pain, can end all sorrow, and can solve all problems. It can do so in connection with yourself, meaning your body as well, and with anyone else. It, your holiness, is equal in its power to help anyone because it is equal in its power to save anyone. Period. That's it. And then here's another quote from, and this one is from. Can we hold up there for a second, though? Because that's just like so massive. So when the mind is governed by divine love alone, mm -hmm. which which casts out fear, if if all we're ever seeing with our physical senses or feeling with physical sense is fear images, it's a misperception, it's a distortion, it's a projection of fear onto the body or onto the world, right? It's a so that's all it is. And if divine love casts out fear, fear calling itself death or fear calling itself a mild headache. These are two images. We've defined one as death, serious. This image over here is just a little headache. Take two Advil, you'll be fine. We came up with that. These are just two images and they're both coming from just fear. And divine love is still all potent to cast out all fear. Divine love doesn't make distinctions. Well, that one might take me a little longer, but this one I got. No, <laughs> you turn the light switch on, all darkness flees. Darkness doesn't have the uh, ability or the wisdom to say, well, I'm going to remain in just a corner for a little bit longer. The light comes on, the darkness is gone. Where did it go? It never was. It's the lights there, darkness flees. Same thing with fear in the mind. Love shows up, a divine love, God's love. And it doesn't matter what the image calls itself, it's gone. And when it's gone from the mind, it's gone from the uh, perception because projection makes perception. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for making that so clear. And yeah, there's no hierarchy. No, there's no hierarchy of darkness. Mm -hmm. All darkness, yes. whatever we might call it, Mm -hmm. It is just lack of light. Yeah. That's it. Damn it. It's good to know this, isn't it? <laughs> We're cooking now, sis. There we are. Thank you. Yeah. Um, here's another quote from the course from Lesson 140. Atonement heals with certainty and cures all sickness. But I love this one, right? It's this one from chapter 27, one of my most favorite chapters, section six. He says, how foolish and insane it is to think a miracle is bound by laws 
that it came solely to undo. Thank you. That's that it can't be literal because we're still looking in the framework of the ego's laws and saying, well, it can't be done. Miracle comes to show us that, you know, the, the so-called laws are fear and light does cast out fear. The miracle is that insertion of light into the dream of fear where two brothers decide to join together for the truth to allow to be the transparency for that light to come in. It just busts it out. But when we hang on to the ego's laws, it will say, well, that's going to be it. That's impossible. Right. Right. Well, we're seeing it through the ego's laws, through the, yes. well, we're seeing it through a false identity. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sis. Hmm. Um, and there was one other thing I wanted to, to. Awesome quotes, by the way. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, it's just irrefutable what he's saying. You cannot. <laughs> You can't argue or water it down when they're brought together like this. Thank you. Well, well, so I've just taken, you know, two thirds of a page of quotes, but I have 21 pages yeah. of quotes yes. on literal miracles, 21 pages that I've harvested over the last 12 years. That's pretty good. Sis, that's fantastic. And she did that, <laughs> she did that for us. So thank you. Thank yeah. you, sis. Yeah, you're welcome. It's really for me too, you know. Um, yeah, but yeah. to extend. Yeah. yeah, I think that's it. And we have some um, blogs as well. Do you want to? Oh, we have yeah. four. <laughs> we have four blogs. Yes, we, we just are so passionate about this. And these blogs are trans transformative and healing. So please, please, please check them out. Let's introduce them here, sis. You want to yeah, read sure. the titles? Okay. The four blogs are A Pivotal Piece on True Healing. And the next one is Jesus Deeper Message, A Holographic Revelation. And the next one is Are Physical Miracles Part of Jesus' Teaching? And the last one is How the Miracle Transfers from Cause to Effect. Now, there's, there's a lot of um, blogs on this topic, mm -hmm. and I've just picked four of the key ones there, but there are other key ones. Yeah. And there are a number of blogs as well that, uh, that reveal my personal experience mm -hmm. with physical miracles. Yes. <laughs> And I mean, these were written, you know, eight, eight or nine years ago. So they're not current. I mean, they're not recent. I could probably write another 20 or 30 blogs on recent miracles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I haven't had the time. <laughs> so, but no, I think it's that's wonderful, sis. I, and I love that you share from your personal experience. I know some people in the YouTube family have commented that that really is so helpful, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and you guys, starting in January, we're doing, Nook and I are going to be joining to unpack the, the blogs. So if you don't get to them now, just please know there'll be an opportunity to join live as we read through the blogs and have Q&A. And then those will be recorded if the time isn't convenient. Um, we'll, we'll post them on uh, the YouTube channel. We, we should let them know what the name of it is so they can look for the class in the quick reference links below. The right um and what's it called it's called <laughs> oh, <it's> embarrassing <laughs> only the ego can be embarrassed right it's just i'm just laughing because on. we just talked about it but yeah anchoring anchoring the deeper practical teachings of the deeper something <laughs> Anyway, you're going to find it down in the links below. Yeah. And if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, that's the best way to find out like what we're offering that's new, when it will be offered, how to sign up. So if you're not getting our newsletter, I'm quite certain that there's a place to, to uh, register for the newsletter down in the, our website, nooksanchez.com. Yeah. <laughs> I know, okay. I know it's on there. <sighs> It'll be in, yeah, but it'll also be below in the 
resource okay. box, right? Okay. All right. So grab the four blogs and the newsletter to find out all the information about the upcoming blog study. If you're interested, we're going to have some fun. I know it. It'll be every two weeks. Yeah, right. one every two weeks. In the US on a Tuesday evening, and we're going to record the sessions yes. for those who are in different time zones and, yes. and uh, they can't make it live. Right. Okay, okay. so we have uh, a lesson. We do. This. You want to read it? Me read it? Okay. Is it 341? It is. Okay. Lesson 341. I can attack but my own sinlessness. And it is only that which keeps me safe. I can attack but my own sinlessness. And it is only that which keeps me safe. So that's really helpful, you know, to recognize that since projection makes perception until the mind is healed, everything that you're seeing you could actually like draw this loop if the brain were your mind just for symbolic purposes you know, draw this loop out from the mind and grab the whole universe in the world and bring it back and recognize that everything that you're seeing all the interpretations that you've overlaid it right what you're experiencing is in your mind so wherever you see attack whenever you're attacking a brother whenever you think a brother is attacking you that's all within the, your mind. So all attack is self attack. If you believe that countries are at war over there, that's attack going on in your mind. If you see a brother being unkind to another brother, that's attack in your mind. If you're unfairly treated, that brother's in your mind and you're interpreting how, what he's saying and doing through your filter, that's a, your self attack, right? Mm -hmm. This is key. This is primary to the foundation of a course in miracles teachings but it takes a while to really get to the level of accepting this but another way of saying this lesson's title is all attack is self-attack right but it's in our sinlessness it's in our innocence that is the escape from the mind that's sick that's projecting all of this right okay. and thank you for clarifying um all all attack and defense Mm -hmm. because see the ego compartmentalizes defense and says no defense is justified because <laughs> there's real attack over there right right okay <laughs> so we have to look at, at every time we try and defend ourselves and when he's talking about attack and as you said sis it's self all attack is self-attack jesus mm -hmm. says that in the course yes um he's also he's also including our self-attack as far as physical self-attack, yeah, on yes. the body. Yes. Yeah. Um, and what I was going to say, something else came through. Sinlessness? No, there was something else. Let me just have a quick look here. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Which is that I'm noticing there's been a shift, and I think that we all go through this shift as we, uh, as we, um, go through the stages of the development of trust, the transfer of trust from fear to mm -hmm. love, right? Mm -hmm. And that is that I'm able to better now than say 10 years ago, I'm able to witness what seems to be forms of attack, but without being triggered. Yes. So that is leaving my mind. I'm not triggered anymore. So that, that, that self-attack is leaving my mind. I would add to what you said before, to the degree that we're triggered mm -hmm. by any type of attack is, right. is the degree that it really is still in our mind. Mm -hmm. So if we're really triggered by uh, COVID or uh, some war that's going on in the world or something in the news, if we're triggered by that, mm -hmm. then that tells us the degree that we're invested still yeah. right so if we by the word attack when we see attack it's because we've made attack real doesn't mean that the images that our eyes are perceiving are going to vanish but our reaction to it right mm -hmm. that's just an illusion there's an illusion there's a there's an image 
And once we've decided what that is and judged it and then decided how we're going to respond to it, we've made it real. All of that exchange with the, that image was mm -hmm. to make it real in our mind. And so it's ours to heal. When we can look upon something in complete neutrality, if you know it's an illusion, is there going to be a response to it? Only if it has some reality for you, will you associate with it. And when you, when you start relating to an image, it's because you want it to be real for you. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's such a great division, divisive thing, right? COVID, bam, politics, bam, you know, even interpretations of the course, bam, we're just polarized. And then the ego goes, my work is done. They'll never get it. Divine love will never yeah. dawn where a mind is at war in itself. That's it. Because it's seeking guilt. Yes. That's all it's seeking the whole damn time is right. guilt. T to hold it's off God right. as yeah. an attack on God. That's, That's really it. ultimately it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we're done. No. <laughs> well, I haven't finished the I'm lesson. Teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing. You know, it's really interesting. These next lessons, they're longer prayers and then like a one or two sentences that he gives us. But these prayers are really beautiful. And he encourages us again to get the felt state. Yeah, there's a change in the form of our practice. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's the prayer, yeah? Mm. Father, your son is holy. I am he on whom you smile in love and tenderness, so dear and deep and still. The universe smiles back on you and shares your holiness. How pure, how safe, how holy then are we abiding in your smile with all your love bestowed upon us, living one with you, in brotherhood and fatherhood complete. In sinlessness so perfect that the Lord of sinlessness conceives us as his son, a universe of thought completing him. Wow. Let us not then attack our sinlessness, for it contains the word of God to us. And in its kind reflection, we are saved. I'm really feeling something about you know, God's grace and God's love is so perfect that, I mean, we believe what we made here and we feel guilt if we believe the separation has occurred. But while we're willing to withdraw our investment in its reality, and while we don't try to correct anything ourselves, God already sent the answer in our mind. And that answer is so loving and so gentle and responds to our slightest invitation, and it comes in, meets us right where we are, takes the illusion, and restores through true perception. I mean, what we made is made holy through true perception. It's not like God ever becomes angry, although normally you would think that he might have a reason or cause to be, but in this transformation in the healing of our mind what we made is made holy like god just extends blesses what was first made as an attempt to attack him it's not that all of this is wadded up and thrown away but it's that through the healing of our mind, what we first did as an act of a war or attack on God is blessed by him 
through forgiveness and our acceptance of the atonement. We walk in a happy dream. We have holy relationship. I mean, he blesses what we made to keep him out. If that isn't grace. Mm. He divinely purifies everything. Everything. And that he is would why. Bless it. Right. So that is why we can afford to have immense gratitude for this process. Yeah. Instead of, you know, digging yeah. our heels in and going, no. Right. <laughs> right. Why are we not just running and giving everything, knowing that he's not there to take it? He's there to bless it. Mm. I mean, it's just, and we know this is true because this is what's happening in our experience. We don't lose anything. No, he just comes, he comes to bless. Yeah. Uh, oh, so great to be actually living this now together. Yeah. You know, this is not just hopeful thinking. Oh, no. Uh. you feel his goodness you know you just want to like you just want to drop everything like a hot potato i'm just dropping everything lately it's just just don't want that i just don't want that why would i want that when i could experience god instead even the last of the last relationships it's like you don't throw the brother out but you throw out everything the way that you used him or her you know you just god i just want to relate to god right there Yeah. So I'm having a grateful party right now. <laughs> hey, that's good. It's wonderful, sis. I mean, we've got to travel. Well, I got to travel with you for the past eight years um, very closely. Yeah. And I've witnessed a transformation that has been quantumly accelerated in the last 11 years months or so right doing the lessons with you yeah and, well, it's because of I, yeah because <laughs> our us. family here right all joined and it's been absolutely miraculous totally miraculous and we're talking about just a year's time where it's been the, 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 you know, it's like a gas stove and you just cranked it up, just turn the gas on. And it's like that force of the, it is the joining and the love that we experience the real divine love, divine love casts out fear. Well, divine love is inclusive. Divine love is what shows up when we forgive special love or exclusive love. And, you know, the ego says that's awful. I'm here to tell you, it's not awful. It gives you life. It gives you clarity, it gives you certainty and good in your life. Yeah. yeah, it's because of the joining, the joining and transcending self-interest and being in function, just it's that turning up of the gas. It just, that flame just starts to really burn off everything that was never true. All self-attack. Yeah. It appears, yeah. right? Right. Oh, gosh, I'm really feeling that too. Thank you. What a beautiful prayer. How pure, how safe, how sacred then are we abiding in your smile. We abide in God's smile. <laughs> this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's his declaration over you. That's the only declaration that's ever been over you. And it's the only one that adequately knows you to define you. You are pure light, sis. We, you are, we are together, right? Yeah, sure. That's all I see. Thank you.
whoa. Well, that was section 13 and lesson 341. Thank you, family, from the bottom of our hearts, our heart, our shared heart to yours. And we'll see you next time. Is that okay, sis? We're good? Yeah. Okay. We've never been gooder. We've never been gooder. <laughs> Bye. We love you.